Hi there, everybody. Hope you're doing well. I welcome you back on a very important discussion and uh, continuing the series of discussions on case studies. So this is a video created which speaks about tips to ace the SEMA case study exam. Everybody wants to pass an exam. They don't want to sit it again. They never want to look at the same exam again. I'm sure that's your drive as a student that you will never want to look at the same exam again, right? Otherwise, how are we even learning? How are we moving forward? So we are here to give you some tips on how the SEMA case study exams can be mastered, how you can make sure that you do well on the SEMA case study exams and which are the non-negotiable skills that you need to do well on this exam. So for those who don't already know, my name is Devansh. I am the lead tutor at FinTutors. FinTutors is a SEMA registered tuition provider. And one step above, we have received the recognition for the global pass rate excellence in the year 2022. Only six other tuition providers have received, have this recognition all over the world. So we are part of the, uh, part of this elite group now, and it can only go on to speak about our course, our material, and just the pass rates that we get. So the information that comes from us, the material that we curate, the details that come from us are very well sought out. They are very well uh, understood and they are very well then presented to you. So any tips that we give, you can 100% take on board, you can 100% follow and you can make sure that they are adding advantage, they are adding, you know, you, you're understanding them and you are picking up ideas from them because they will surely advantage your preparation for this exam. And we are the only tuition provider that provides the comprehensive kind of material that we do with full revision courses, with live lessons, with 25 exam styled mock questions, which is 60 to 70 questions. And there are high possibilities of the questions that we practice to come up in the exam because of how we structure them and because of the volume of questions that we make you do and because of the corrections that we give you. So all in all, it's a well-rounded package and a well-rounded system that we have developed and one which you will be able to benefit from if you simply follow and pick up on the tips that we give. Obviously, we have varying study courses, we have varying study material which you can choose from to which will definitely take your preparation to a different level. Now this blog is and this video we write blogs, we create videos, is dedicated to talking about soft skills one at a time, which are very important for this exam. In my earlier videos, I have already mentioned that this exam is three main pillars, the revision pillar, the pre-scene pillar and the writing pillar. This particular blog, and this particular video, I am aiming at giving you the most important non-negotiable skills in detail, which you cannot compromise on in any way, any circumstance. The first skill, most important is writing skills. Now the case studies are inherently designed in a way that your communication skills have to be bang on for you to skate through the exam in time, which means if you can't communicate, if you can't put explanations in your own words, it's not going to help. So the difficult part is not to think of points. The difficult part is once you've thought of the points, how are you going to write them in a convincing way? How are you going to portray them in a convincing way? And some important steps to follow is that whatever points come to your mind, randomly don't start writing them you need to write them down or put them down in your worksheet, in your rough sheet, in your work pad. And then by, by looking at those points, you avoid duplication and then devote time to brainstorming on those points and then detail on them. So first, 
while reading the question, points will come to your mind. Sure, so write them down. Once they have, once you've written them down, don't just start writing on them. Sequence them. See what you want to write first. See what you want to write second, and then detail on each point. Second, you can always first write a heading and then explain your point. You can underline the heading and then explain your point. The idea is to make it easier to read, easier to understand so that the marker gives you that credit. So underline your headings, put headings, give subheadings to your points to make it easier. Third, try and explain each point. Just stating down a list of points is never going to help. You need to explain everything you write in the case study perspective related to your company. To, so decide the size and depth of your explanation. Obviously, when students study with us, we tell them how much they're expected to write, where they're supposed to write how much, how much credit will they get for one point. Once that is understood and once your point list is available, you've put your headings and then you just need to start to explain. Then you just need to create your explanations. For instance, if you're a finance manager in the case and writing the answer to a marketing head, reduce the number of finance jargons. You want to keep it simple. You want to keep it easy to understand. Remember your communication, your soft skills are very important. You just can't start writing anything and then expect that, you know, the person who's reading will understand what I'm writing. No, it has to be related to your company, but simple. And everybody should understand it when they read it. Next, always write an introduction and a summary or conclusion for your answer. It can be one, one, two, two sentences, but it makes your answer look complete. Now, these are just uh, most important points that we are giving you. Obviously, when you study with us, we'll show you the entire pattern. We'll show you the entire system of how an introduction is written, how a conclusion is written. But these are pointers which you cannot forget. Next, divide your answer in appropriate sections. For example, separate the pros and the cons and label each part of your answer. Like I said, give headings. Label each part of your answer, label each point if you have to. For example, the first thing that they asked you was advantages of social media marketing. So your first heading becomes advantages of social media marketing. Under it, you give a subheading. First point is, let's say, uh, massive reach. Under it, you start to write social media marketing will have great reach as a large number of users are online at one point. So if you post anything, a lot of people have that viewership and can view it at one time. It's very cheap as well. So you saw what I did. I put my heading. I gave a subheading to my point and then I explained it from the case study perspective. This is what writing skill is about. So the first thing that we spoke about is writing skill. And underwriting skill, to summarize, convincing way, you need to write in a way that is convincing. Secondly, you need to sequence your points well, not random mixture of ideas. Third, you need to give headings, subheadings. Fourth, each point has to be explained. It can't be a simple one-line list of pointers. No. Fifth. A brief introduction and conclusion is needed. And sixth, always divide your answers. Give spacings. Give separate headings according to what they have asked. Writing, if you look at the emojis, they are very, very apt. And that is why they've been put over here. So to summarize further, writing, focusing on key areas. And third, to the eye, it should be pleasing. Now, I always give a diagrammatic view of anything that I'm explaining because you'll be able to remember it in a better way, in an easier way. So when you're thinking about writing an answer, remember these three emojis or three, three images that I've put over here. For example, writing. Okay, I have to focus on writing. 
Second, I have to focus on the key points and how I present. Third, the look of the answer should also be one that is simple and easy to read. This has summarized everything that we spoke about. So the study methods that we bring to the SEMA course are innovative, are new, are completely new, and they will definitely help you remember the important aspects. So first non-negotiable skill to ace this exam is writing skill. Second skill we move on to is the business acumen. Now one of the most important marking criteria is the business acumen that you show. Practicality is the, I'll say, one of the most vital things of this exam. If they asked you something and you replicated something directly from the notes over here, directly from the textbook over here, a big zero will be awarded. Nobody wants that for any case study. Nobody wants that. Nobody, you know, wants to give you credit for that because if they wanted that, they could have got it from the internet. They are using your role in that organization to answer this question because they are sure that you will provide an answer that is specific and practical for your company, for your pre-seen company. So one of the most important marking criteria is the business acumen that you show. Not every solution is a good solution. You have to provide something that is relevant for your company. Most people fail because of not doing this. They have the knowledge, they can write well, but they don't understand that they have to present the answer which is relevant for your company. If they're asking you advantages of social media marketing, you have to give advantages for your company. You have to, the explanation that you provide has to be related to your company. So to do a good job on business acumen, be proactive in your answers. If while providing a solution, you think of a possible obstacle, include it in your answer. For instance, if you are proposing a discounted pricing model and feel that this may create a subpar image of your product, then mention it. For example, if they asked you for our company, which are the different pricing strategies. First, you suggested premium pricing. Second, you suggested discounted pricing. While writing discounted pricing, you can say that discounted pricing can be used, but for a premium quality company like ours, discounted pricing might give a subpar product image, which might not be good. So see what you're doing, because that's what happens in the business world, right? Not everything is good. Not all your suggestions or not everything is relevant for your company. Same thing you're doing over here. When you're writing something, if you feel it's relevant for your company, right? I think this is the best way forward. If you don't think it's relevant for your company, right? That I don't think this is the best direction for the company. So be proactive in your answers. Treat it like you are at work. It's like somebody asked you a question at work. How would you answer it? Same way you're supposed to write it. Be proactive, be practical in your writing. Second, be comprehensive in your answers. Like I've said, don't just suggest technical solutions. Even if it's a technical question, think how you will present it to somebody who is learning about that concept. For example, if you're writing about choosing one of two projects financially, giving an example for the management case study. For example, you're choosing between two projects and you are basing your decision on the NPV criteria. Now, obviously, NPV is something that is technical. So you should write it in a way where you first explain in two, three lines what the NPV concept is. And then you tell them that we'll choose the project which has the higher NPV. As simple as that. So whenever you write something, be comprehensive. Understand that not everybody has finance knowledge. Think. That is very important. Third, write about both short-term and long-term effects of the solution you provide. For example, when you're writing something, think about the effect that it will have on the company. Like I mentioned, discounted pricing. See if your company can actually use that method. NPV, see if, you're, see if how you're writing is something that you know people will understand. Whatever you write, 
think about the effects on your company that business skill has to be there so to summarize the second part of the business acumen in terms of images or emojis however you want to say it first is thinking being proactive in your answers and being comprehensive in your writing and second remember whatever you write should be important and related to your company that is why i've put a star over here so business acumen is the second most important skill or the second important skill that you need for this exam third time management Again, very, very important. All three, four skills that I'm going to speak about are important and very important for a case study. Time management. Completing your answer is the most important skill in this exam. If you know everything, but if you still write only half the answer, you're going to get half the marks. It's as simple as that. So how can you finish your answers in time? First, don't burn yourself out in initial questions. Now, most of the students lose their energy and vigor by the time they reach the last question. And that's why they leave the last question or leave parts of some questions towards the end of the exam. And eventually, they are not going to pass the answer. It is very important that you use the entire minutes that have been given to you. In the operational and management case study, you are given 45 minutes per question. You are supposed to use each minute that they have awarded to you. In the strategic case study, they give you 60 minutes. If you feel, firstly, we when you sign up with us, we will teach you our planning method. We will teach you how you must plan for a case study exam, how you must plan for an answer that you are going to present in a case study exam, what the planning structure should be. We'll teach you that. But most important in that is whatever plan you are following, give yourself the entire time commitment. Never leave out anything because if you leave out anything, you are out of the game. So firstly, don't burn yourself out. The consistency has to be there throughout the exam. Each question is important. You cannot leave anything. Second, don't keep rewriting. If you've written something, you can't keep rewriting it because you're losing time and you're not going to get the marks for it. So in terms of time management, don't burn yourself on initial questions. Have consistency. Don't rewrite. Third, don't waste your time over explaining anything. For example, like I said, if you're explaining NPV, two, three lines is more than enough. They've not asked you to write a thesis on NPV. They've not asked you to explain everything that you know about NPVs. No, they're asking you which project to choose. And you're using your explanation for NPV to start your answer. So two, three lines is more than enough. Understand the requirement of the question. So don't waste your time over explaining anything. And fourth, under time management, which is the most important, is your typing speed. Some students are not comfortable with the keyboard. That's not good. You have to be comfortable. And for that, you will have to practice a good typing speed of at least 30 words per minute is recommended. 30 words per minute should be your typing speed if you want to do, if you want to put in the amount that is required by this exam, the details that are required by this exam. So under time management, consistency, don't keep rewriting, plan well, e use every single minute. And fifth, a good typing speed is very, very crucial and important. Coming to the last part, community learning. One thing that we really value is community learning. When students study with us, we have cohort Live, live classes where we are a group, everybody's learning together. So for example, for question number one, we'll get 20 submissions. For example, we'll correct every student's answer individually. And once the corrections are ready, we will send them out to the students. But with each answer, we will give you suggested answers and we will give you model answers. Now model answers are my answers. 
Suggested answers are the answers of a student from your group itself. So you are getting the perspective of that student. You are learning the thought process of that student. You are seeing what that student has done good. Learning from it. And then next time you also implement the same. So we give a lot of importance to community learning. It's not only viewing your answers and moving on. Your answers, corrections. Another student answers who we feel has done a good job which you can learn from. So getting the community aspect. And third, my model answers as well which is written by my team of tutors. So it can be uniquely insightful and can open your mind to very many new possibilities, very many new ideas if you focus on learning as a group and that's what happens when you study with us. You get lots more perspective. You get lots more ideas. You get lots more direction because you will have you, you will be getting different different perspectives. So if you want to ace your case study exam, may it be the OCS, MCS or the SCS, they have similar structures. Technicalities change, obviously, but their structures are and do remain the same. If you want to ace the exam, the first thing that you'll have to focus on is, I, as we have uh, you know, dealt with in this series, first thing we will focus on is the writing skills. Under writing skills, I gave you the different ideas. Second thing, the business acumen. Third thing, the time management. And fourth thing, community learning. Now, FinTutors is a place for you to learn all of this on the one root, on the one roof, in one place, by qualified tutors who know your needs. We have an alumnus of successful students who have cracked their SEMA exams with flying colors. You can view our testimonials and everything's available online. We value community learning and know that success in SEMA is characterized by holistic development of both knowledge and of soft skills. We ensure a lively discussion of scenarios among students in our case study programs and give our students ample practice with ample personalized feedback to help you pass. That's our goal. And we are here to help you pass. We are here to, uh, you know, uh, prove that our course works. And it's just only further cemented by uh, the excellence award that we received in 2022. So these are some important skills for this exam. If you have any questions, write to us on help at the rate fintutors.com. That's our email, help at the rate fintutors.com. F-I-N-N-T-U-T-O-R-S dot com. You can also leave your questions in the comment section below. We will, uh, you know, you can visit our website for any more details that you need. And you can use the website chat as well. On the website, we have a website chat where you can speak to one of our representatives and they'll answer any questions that you may have. That's all for this video. Thank you for being here. I hope you find it helpful and I hope you pass the exam using the tips that I have provided. Thank you.